Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. What is Diagnostics Foundation Episode 4, F4? So today we're going to explain what diagnostics is in the context of vehicles and how it can be used. You will benefit from understanding the concepts we've covered in episode F2, what is an ECU, such as basic software and application. You may also benefit from watching episode F3, networks in vehicles, before you watch this episode. So, actually, we all know diagnostics already. It's what happens when we visit a doctor. So if we're feeling unwell or we have injured ourselves in some way, we go to the doctor and the doctor asks questions or requests data from us and also takes measurements such as our temperature or, or heart rate. And based on this, they're, they're trying to build up a picture. Now, the requests, therefore, don't only relate to how we feel now. Quite often, their requests will be about when we first noticed that we didn't feel so well, or what were we doing when we hurt our arm? And they do this to be able to use our responses to build an understanding of what our symptoms really mean to be able to decide an appropriate treatment for us. Whether that is medication, physical therapy, an operation, and or, or whatever it is that we, we need to get better again. And of course, in vehicles, if something breaks, we, or, or at least people in workshops, need to build an understanding of what has happened or is happening to be able to decide on a treatment for that vehicle. Which of course, in, in a vehicle, we're going to fix something or repair something or adjust it to bring things back into proper working order. And as the ECUs in vehicles are connected to networks, it means that we can send diagnostic requests to them from some special software and receive their diagnostic responses to help us build that understanding. And this kind of pattern of a request followed by a corresponding response is, uh, in software terms, is a service. So the ECUs provide diagnostic services. Now, diagnostics in vehicles goes back, um, I've mentioned before, to the, to the 1980s, where OBD regulations started to mandate that vehicles had to respond to requests and relating to their emission control systems, including the structure and the content. So everything in OBD is, is completely standardized. So you can buy the OBD standard and you can go to a vehicle and you can do OBD um, onboard diagnostics. You can, you can work out what's happening in the emissions control system. Everything's completely standardized. This is why you can buy off the shelf little dongles, which you can plug into any car, and then you can see information about the car. That's the emissions control system, but there's more than just the emissions control system in a car. The emissions control in a, in a modern car is things like the engine, of course, but then if you have a diesel car, there'll be after treatment maybe, there may be exhaust gas recirculation, there's things like air conditioning systems. Obviously, if you have a hybrid vehicle, the, the hybridization system affects the emissions of, of a vehicle, hopefully to reduce them. Um, but obviously, if it goes wrong, it can, it can increase them. So OBD is, it's a lot, but it's not everything. So for general requests and responses, there's an ISO standard, so International Organization for Standardization, which is called Unified Diagnostic Services, or UDS for short, which is ISO 14229 Part 1. And this defines structures of requests and responses. And the vehicle manufacturers then define how the contents go into those structures. So the actual way that the data is to be interpreted is defined by the vehicle manufacturer. And they also can place restrictions on the way you can send requests or when you can send requests. So sometimes there's sequences that you, you have to obey. So you can buy the ISO standard, but that doesn't actually tell you everything you need to know to be able to diagnose a vehicle. That information will come from the manufacturer of that vehicle. Now, in some cases, for heavy duty diagnostics, by which I mean things like trucks and diggers, um, off-road machinery, uh, agricultural vehicles, 
they they use a, another standard for for diagnostics, which is called SAEJ nineteen thirty nine. But the, the the kind of things you can do are, are broadly similar, so we won't get too much into what the different standards are about. Just just know that they exist today. So what are the things we want to do? Maybe well, if we get a vehicle in a workshop, we may want to read data from it. So we may want to try and find out what ECU serial numbers there are in there in case we know there's a problem with a certain batch of ECUs and we need to replace them or other things like the part numbers, software versions. Maybe there's a software update that we can apply and that fixes a, a known problem that people may complain about. And of course, maybe want to write data. So writing data, well, obviously a so software update is a kind of, of writing data, but also we can turn on options in ECUs that provide additional functions. So this is something you may encounter if you're buying a, a vehicle, you'll get a list of options that you can, you can have enabled at the dealership. And what they're doing is they use diagnostics to turn on those additional things for you once you've, you've paid the money for that thing. We might also want to read the IO of the ECU to help us work out if there's a, a problem with the wiring. Because maybe we can say then, well, okay, I, I'm pressing a switch, but the ECU itself isn't seeing that that switch is, is being pressed at the input. Or maybe I can turn on the output of a, an ECU and then try to work out if there's a problem between the output and, say, a motor or a light. We also have the ability to run special functions. Now, this is maybe a bit less obvious, but we may need to run special functions for some systems to be able to detect problems in them. But also, if we want to set up a system, so when we're manufacturing a vehicle or maintaining a vehicle, um, we, we may want to do things, so, so for example, filling the brake system with fluid. Now the braking system has lots of valves in it, uh, in, a, in a modern car and with the anti-lock braking systems we have. So we need to make sure those valves are in a position where we can actually drain the fluid or fill the fluid, whatever it is we want to do. And obviously in service, if we were replacing the fluid, we need to drain it out and then fill it again. So we have special functions that actually allow us to do those operations. And these are done using diagnostics as well. And additionally, ECUs are actually able to save information if they detect faults. This is called a fault memory. And we can read information out of the fault memory in the form of diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs, which are also sometimes called fault codes. So you may have gone to a, a workshop in the past and they'll have said there's a DTC in the engine, there's a DTC in the, in the brakes or, or somewhere. That's what this means. It means that the ECU has detected something which could be a problem and is then reporting that when the workshop technician has connected a diagnostic tool to your vehicle um, and they've read the default memory out. So what this means is that to design diagnostics, we really have to analyze the system design as a whole to consider what could go wrong in it and how it could go wrong. And also, we need to think about what other data there might be that might help us distinguish between different causes of a symptom that's reported by a, a driver or, or user of the vehicle. And alongside all that, we also need to think about how we might need to maintain the vehicle and even things we might want to do when we're manufacturing the vehicle. So it's not just about when the vehicle breaks. Diagnostics covers a, a huge amount of, of space in a, in a vehicle lifetime. Um, and in terms of the data, it's not just about data when the fault occurs, because that's important, but also, of course, the data when the vehicle's in the workshop. What do we have available? Maybe if something's broken, that might help us say, well, it's it's one thing and not another, or vice versa. So we don't want to just be randomly replacing things on a vehicle. That takes time and it's expensive and it also has a risk of damage. We want to replace the, the right thing the first time. So what happens inside those ECUs? Well, as well as providing control functions, the application of an ECU will contain monitoring functions to make sure that everything's going correctly. And if those monitoring functions get triggered or tripped by something which is unusual, then they will ask the basic software to log an event and also data relevant to that event. So this is what helps us maybe later on work out it was this and not that that's actually happened. And often, 
Of course, the monitoring functions need to be able to read the ECU I.O. And that means that the hardware of an ECU needs to be designed with the diagnostics in mind. So well, why is that? Well, if we want to monitor an output, it means we actually need an internal input. So if we want to check that when the software thinks some an output has been turned on, it is actually on. We need to put some special circuitry on the board that can detect that that output is on and then feed that back to an input on the on the microcontroller. And if we want to know the voltage or current, again, that special circuitry that needs to be included in the hardware. Without that hardware, we can't measure anything. So if we do diagnostics late, we may not actually be able to do the diagnostics we we need to do diagnostics design late, I should say. We may not be able to do the diagnostics we want to do. And the basic software then is responsible obviously for receiving requests because it's network data. It also sends responses, network data again. And sometimes, of course, the, the requests that come in relate to the basic software. So things like the fault memory are all handled within the, the basic software. And sometimes, of course, they the requests will relate to things in the application. So running a special function is as, as, as an example of that kind of thing. And if we need to update ECU software, whether that's the application or the basic software, and actually in a North in, in most ECUs, it's everything together. You, you can't do one or the other or just little bits. You have to do the whole thing. Then this is also done using UDS and a special part of the ECU software, which is called a flash bootloader or FBL. That's, um, yeah, that's quite advanced. We won't get into that today, certainly. So that is everything we're going to talk about. So as a summary, OBD and UDS and J1939 provide ways for workshops to get information from ECUs or perform special tasks with them to be able to pinpoint problems in vehicles and to maintain vehicles and keep them in good order. The diagnostics capabilities of ECUs are provided by both the BSW and the application. The BSW is responsible for network connections and the fault memory, while the application contains monitoring functions and pro provides other capabilities to workshop to staff to allow them to get their job done when a vehicle comes in. And of course, we want them to get their job done as efficiently as possible because otherwise it's our vehicle that sits in the workshop for days or weeks while they try to work out what's happening. So diagnostic design is a really essential activity. It can even influence the hardware design of an ECU as well as, of course, the software. And it links symptoms to, to causes. And things like the fault memory, um, it can consume huge amounts of memory inside an ECU. So the, the, the fault memory that you may need may actually make a, you choose a different microcontroller to one you might have otherwise chosen. It's, it's that significant in terms of the hardware design. And then we have a special bit of software as well called Flash Bootloader that allows ECUs to have the soft, their, their software updated. So if you want to know more about diagnostics, or diagnostics, of course, it's a, it's a key task for ECUs. It's a huge area. We've, we've really only just touched on it all today because without it, modern vehicles just would not be able to be fixed or maintained. And in this area, Vector provides a lot of tools and services and software so we have detailed technical training which you can find details of we have tools that will help engineers design diagnostics and ensure that diagnostics is working correctly before ECUs get built into vehicles obviously diagnostics that doesn't work correctly means you either can't find what's wrong or you start replacing the wrong stuff which is maybe even worse um, tools for providing vehicle for performing diagnostics and even updating the software even remotely or over the air so OTA is is a topic which is coming up in the in automotive industry you may know we also, of course, provide the embedded software for ECUs that provides the diagnostic services. And you can get details on all of this, plus, of course, articles and how-to videos and tutorials and loads more. There's tons of stuff on the Vector website. So dig into the Vector website and, 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 and you'll find loads of information there on, on diagnostics in vehicles. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, if you have any questions 
or you have any suggestions for topics based on what you've seen in this episode or any of our other episodes, please email us at engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Thank you very much. I'm Ian Cunningham. Bye.